TK-421, why aren't you at your post? TK-421, do you copy? Hello, this is Pilot TK-421 leaving my post to bring you a post. Alright everybody, I'm sitting here playing the first Ascendant, and I figured, well, it's probably about time that I uh, did another video and whatnot, and this one I figure will explain a little bit more on the whole leveling process, and oh, just to really go how to go about uh, doing everything and whatnot and making sense of everything. So, uh, where to begin? I guess the beginning. Uh, first off, you have uh, three forms of experience that you get. There is character experience, there is mastery rank, and there is weapons proficiency. As you can see, I've got a proficiency level of 14 on this weapon. Now, in order for you to gain mastery rank, you need to level up your character, and every level that you get on your character, you gain a small amount of uh, mastery rank, actually a really decent amount if I remember correctly. And whenever you gain a proficiency level on a weapon, it doesn't matter which weapon, you still get a small amount of, uh, a decent amount of uh, mastery experience. Uh, why is that important? Because that's the only way that you actually gain mastery rank besides doing story missions and a few things like the uh, boss battles and possibly like uh, invasions and stuff like that. But uh, from what I understand, the bulk of your mastery rank is going to come from leveling your character and your weapons proficiencies. Uh, why is that important? Because uh, uh, as you increase your uh, mastery rank, you gain access to more capacity for modules, weapons modules, equipment inventory, a whole bunch of other stuff. And as you can see, uh, page 6, uh, mastery rank is 30 for maximum rank. Now, if you're wondering, well, how does that pertain to this, it's because for the first 40 levels of any character, you will gain uh, the mastery rank, at which point in time you will be a maximum rank, and you won't be able to uh, gain any more module capacity, and you'll max out at 80. Uh, Fun fact, here's a look at the skills that I, well, the modules that I'm running here on this character, but uh, I'll go into those a bit later and whatnot. Um, once you reach level 40, you can then come over here and you can assign a module socket type, which is basically just taking one of these brands here and applying it to one of these slots here. Uh, these brands here, um, if you actually take a look, um, under uh, module socket type it says it's an almadine and it's a little sort of triangular thing or whatever there but uh, yeah that's what the brand is is the triangle symbol there and that means that any of the uh, modules with this brand on it that get equipped there will actually take up 50% less points to equip which comes in handy because then you can, you know, crank up the levels on your individual modules. Okay, with that being said, and you only having 80 to deal with, you can't max out all of these at the same time unless you start applying these things here, but when you do, uh, it resets your level down to level 1 and then you grind up again and you can reapply another one and basically what you want to do is this is just a uh, brief overview of which ones are already occupied with a brand I got an M here and a little triangle here I don't know the names of them so please forgive me on that and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the brand that I got here, for example it's an R. 
slow just didn't apply in our this one and possibly this one too because that one is also the same with this one. So basically I'm gonna, by the time I'm done and I use enough of these, uh, whatchamacallit, crystallization catalysts, speaking of, they are rather extremely rare to get. Uh, I managed to pick up three of them in the event that was going on that they had. Uh, at the beginning of the season so that was kind of a bonus there but uh, anyway back to the uh, modules and whatnot um, basically all of these will then take up like 50% less uh, space and I can then you know start increasing them to maximum values I have already started increasing them somewhat here but I am going to uh, you know possibly do other stuff later on I'll get into that later and whatnot um, as for weapons, pretty much just uh, until you get your gold weapons and whatnot that you like, uh, just pick up any old rifle that you get of high enough level. Uh, if you're wondering if what uh, exactly I mean by that, if you take a look at the map, for example in Kingston here, if you take a look at say one of the missions here, it's got a monster level of 1, that's the equipment level that you'll need at least to be able to handle the mission safely. Um, as for this one, see monster level 9 there, so you need you know a level 9 gun, some level 9 equipment, stuff like that, in order to be able to take it on safely you know, relatively by yourself, if you're, you know, relatively skillful enough. I like to try and do them on my own if I can, but, uh, you know, if you want to get your friends in on it, go for it, because you all benefit from it. Anyway, back to the inventory here. Um, once you do actually start getting gold weapons and stuff like that, what I recommend you do is use the upgrade process to, uh, you know, transfer the level from, say, a blue weapon here, like what I have here, to a gold weapon here, and I'll show you actually how to do that here, because I can do it right now, I might as well. I'm just going to run over here, and this is the weapons machine here. If you use that, we'll go over to weapons level transmission. What you want to do here is you want to pick the weapon that you want to upgrade, and that will be this one here because it's level one and I actually want to start using it because it didn't look too bad and I tried hand cannons before and they were pretty fun. But it is only level uh, one right now so it's not really going to do much for me right now so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this guy to upgrade that and it will require one of these precision phase exchangers and they cost some components to craft but uh, well worth it in my opinion. I'm just going to do that here. And that increased it from level 1 to level 30. And now if we look, it's got a damage of 11,000, but all of the uh, special modifiers are all grayed out on it. It's because the modifiers that were on there were calibrated for a level 1 weapon. And this is a level 30 weapon now, so it really doesn't have any uh, actual bearing. I mean, the weapons damages and stuff like that are decent and whatnot, but they're nowhere near what would be considered decent for the level that it's at. So, what we then do is we exit out of that and we go to weapons readjustment. And we select the weapon again. As you can see here, it will cost one fine adjustment control access to re-roll um, re these for a higher level. So we'll just go ahead and do that. And as you can see, we got some fairly you know, decent ones and whatnot. I mean, nothing you know, great or anything like that that I would consider, but, uh, you know, better than what it was. So I'm just going to readjust one more time. Mm, not much better, but, uh, you know, I'll take it for now. Um, if you do happen to come across one that you want to keep, you can just, you know, lock it so that you don't 
not uh, accidentally get rid of it when you're re-rolling. It will cost extra uh, freshman control access to do that, but uh, you know, that's to be expected and whatnot. But you might be wondering, uh, you know, why you do all this, and that's so that you can actually level up your character and whatnot, and do a bunch of stuff. And another question that you might be having right now is, if you only get, uh, you know, mastery rank for the first 40 levels of your character and the first, uh, you know, 40 levels of um, weapons proficiency, it does max out at 40, and you have to. Uh, basically use that same process that I described earlier for applying a brand to your character's module slots to your weapon slots. And that does take time and grinding and whatnot, which is why you have, uh, you know, various modules that you can use, like, uh, let's see... This one here gives you a character experience gain modifier, which means that it'll take you less time to gain the levels back that you, uh, you know, just finished resetting and whatnot. Uh, you've got equipment drop rate modifiers for when you're in, like, farming and whatnot. Um, you've got, uh, where is it? Uh, firearm proficiency gain modifiers too, so that you can regain your uh, weapons proficiency levels faster and whatnot. But that also means that uh, in order for you to possibly get, you know, your full mastery rank of 30, you might have to use a bunch of other weapons that you're not used to and whatnot. But uh, yeah, another thing is. Uh, being as I'm sitting here and thinking about it and whatnot, and well, it's only 12 minutes into the video, so I mean, it's still got lots of time, I suppose. I'll go into uh, reactors. Uh, reactors have five different flavors there's uh, burning, uh, tingling, uh, frozen, toxic, non attribute, and. Uh, Lightning uh, energy. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. It or no, that's what tingling is. Yeah, sorry, um, getting distracted here. Um, anyway, if you take a look at your uh, character, you'll see that he's got a fire attribute. So you kind of want to try and use the uh, burning reactors or the ones that are designated by the fire icon and whatnot for this character because it'll be the most beneficial for him. You can, however, get in, get away in a pinch with using rather high-level reactors of different types, like, say, Frozen or Toxic, if it does happen to actually boost your uh, skill power higher than what it actually is when you've got this one equipped, but uh, you know, that's for you know, min-maxing later on and whatnot. But, Basically what you want to do is all the equipment that you want to use and whatnot you want to basically favorite because that way you can easily get rid of any of the junk that you acquire so you can basically keep your uh, inventory as empty as possible because um, there have been known to be issues with uh, you know loot actually transferring to your lost and found that's sitting on the floor and whatnot, so I just like to make sure that I pick everything up when I'm going through and not because if I know I pick it up then I know it's in my inventory when I get back to, uh, you know, at least that I can actually, you know, scrap it and whatnot. And being as, uh, you know, you need to use multiple characters. One other thing I wanted to get into is using the presets. Um, basically what you want to do is anytime you're working on a character, if you want to switch to another character, just uh, click on the character that you got. I'm using my Electic. Uh, just for a note, it automatically defaults to the first preset whenever you enter in here. So if you're, say, using your bunny character or this chick here, um, make sure that you actually select it and save it to the right spot. But since we're on Epic here, we're just going to save 
<clears throat> excuse me. I'm just gonna save the current setting setups. And then we can basically go over this one. And if we press another button, we can actually switch to this one. And boom, we've swapped characters. And apparently I'll have to uh, put something because something I got rid of is not here, which is there. Anyway, I'll have to save that. I was doing some messing around. Yeah, make sure that before you swap to any other character, you actually... Oops. I'll have to redo my lepic now. And that's why we do that. Make sure that you click on it, because it automatically defaults. Personally, I wouldn't mind if they actually just left it as whichever one you click on, that's the one that you actually swap to, because now I've got to go through and reset up my lepic, but that's not a big deal. Actually, uh, I'll do it later. Uh, yeah, anyway, um, this one here, I'm going to look to it. Because this one I just unlocked. Uh, with Descendant Modules. Basically, whenever you start a brand new character, um, you'll get X amount of modules. Basically, try and equip them with whatever you feel is necessary. I like to use like polygenic antibodies and increased defenses. Uh, if I didn't mess up my uh, other save I'd go over that. Actually I can uh, just switch to the bunny here. Because uh, save just want to swap. As you can see character swapping can be a little bit uh, funny at times but uh, yeah, for example, for uh, base stuff that I like to use, I like to use increased defense, increased hit points, polygenic antibodies, and agony. All these will help increase your uh, hit points or defense. And honestly, in games like this, you need all the defense you can get. Like here, you've got 95.6% defense. Add on another 38.5 uh, there. Um, this just basically gives you 640 resistance to basically all attributes such as, you know, lightning, stuff like that, um, toxins, sorry I'm getting a little bit sleepy here talking about all this, but uh, yeah, basically those are the four, yeah, the four basic ones that I like to have on pretty much all of my characters because it increases my survivability quite a bit. And then as I go through, I add other stuff like safe recovery. Another good thing to do is uh, focus on electric for, say, Bunny, because she uses electricity. If you want to uh, use, like, Lepic, I just need, like, use a Fire Master or something like that. I'm looking for uh, an Electric Master or whatever it is called. But so far, I've got focus on electric for Bunny, so that'll have to do. And then for, uh, you know, characters like uh, Bunny that uh, have skills with uh, durations and whatnot, you want to use something to increase your skill duration. And you also want to use something that will increase your skill, skill cooldown for basically all of your characters because that will allow you to use your skills a lot faster. I do plan on adding some other stuff to this character, like uh, Spear and Shield, that'll give me even more defense and skill power. And where to go? Uh, one other one I wanted to add was Technician, wherever it went. Um, I'll have to find it later. I don't see it right at the moment. Oh, there it is, Technician. Basically anything that improves your uh, skill power is basically, you know, a good thing and whatnot, but uh, yeah, I think uh, you know, it's getting close to the 20 minute mark here and stuff like that, so we'll have to uh, basically uh, the video here and whatnot, but uh, hopefully that explained a little bit uh, more about uh, stuff and whatnot to do with uh, your characters and stuff. I don't really think there's anything too much else left to talk about, so 
I think that I will just leave it at that, and I will now have to go and fix my characters and whatnot, but uh, that's okay, it won't take very long. So anyway, uh, for now, take care, stay safe, have fun, thanks for checking out my video, and hopefully I will see you in-game sometime.